thank you and uh, th thanks a lot for the invitation to speak at this uh, at, at this day. It's a great honor to speak uh, uh, to speak uh, in this event for for Barry Mazur, and especially it's a great pleasure to speak on the subject of uh, flat cohomology. Of course, uh, Mazur was uh, one of the pioneers of using flat cohomology in uh, in arithmetic, especially in his. Uh, uh, paper on Iwasawa theory for, for elliptic curves and in relation with, with, with Selmer groups and we'll see some, uh, some points of con contact uh, uh, between what I'm going to discuss and what Barry has uh, thought about uh, uh, ov over the years. So the subject within flat cohomology that I'd like to discuss is, is uh, purity, uh, purity phenomena and th this is in fact uh, a, a flat cohomology analog of, of uh, of what was uh, Grothendieck's absolute cohomological purity conjecture, which was subsequently proved by Gaber. And uh, let me just recall the statement of the latter to put, uh, to put the flat cohomology statement in, in perspective. So Grothendieck's absolute cohomological purity, uh, now a theorem of Gaber, uh, who gave mo multiple proofs, the so first one in, in 94, says that if one has a regular uh, notarian local ring, regular local ring R with maximal ideal M uh, and, and if one has a finite finite et al uh, commutative R group scheme G uh, whose order is invertible in, uh, in R then the et al cohomology of this, of this regular local ring R with supports in the maximal ideal and coefficients in this group G, which could be, for instance, Z mod N, with N invertible in, in the ring, uh, vanishes uh, for in cohomological degrees less than twice the dimension of, of this regular ring R. And in fact, there's a sharper version which also describes the top, uh, top degree twice the dimension and above twice the dimension it also vanishes. Uh, and uh, OK, th this stated here in. In, in, in a local setting, but if, if, one has, uh, if one has a global regular, regular scheme, and of course this kind of result says that uh, et al cohomology classes can be extended over closed subschemes of large enough co-dimension in comparison to the, to the degree of the, of, of the, of the, cohomology, cla of the cohomology class, the, 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 hence, the name, hence the name purity. And uh, the result for flat cohomology that I'd like to discuss is, a, is an analog of this, of, of, of this for, for flat cohomology. And uh, it has, uh, together us, uh, with anything else that, I, that I'll be discussing, is joined with, uh, with, with Peter Schultz. Uh, so he, here we have, uh, okay, so we want, to, we want to drop the assumption that G be, be et al, and that its order be invertible in, uh, in the ring. And uh, in fact, it also turns out to be good to drop the assumption that the ring is, is regular, to allow that the ring is uh, complete intersection. Uh, that it's singular, but uh, its singularities are complete intersection. So if one, it, the statement more precisely is that if one has a local complete intersection, uh, notarian local ring, uh, R with maximal ideal M, and as before, well, we have a commutative, a finite flat R group scheme, G, uh, of any order, perhaps of order equal power of the rest of characteristic, which probably is positive, uh, then uh, the flat cohomology with supports in the maximal ideal of this local complete intersection uh, ring R and with coefficients in, in, in G, uh, flat cohomology now vanishes in cohomological degrees less than the dimension of the, of the ring. Okay, so in comparison to, to Grothendieck's conjecture here, we, there we were having twice the dimension, now it's only the dimension. I'd like to begin right away by giving an example which shows why, wh why, why this occurs. In fact, it occurs already in natal cohomology because we have complete intersection singularities if or the order of G is invertible on, on R, one still only has the dimension rather than twice the dimension. But uh, let me give an example which somehow captures uh, Phenomena that also, in the end, are responsible for this vanishing, as, as, as we'll see in a moment. So, uh, firstly, by by the cohomological characterization of depth of uh, in, in commutative algebra, uh, we have that the cohomology with supports of this local ring R 
and with coefficients in the structure sheaf, or GA in other words, uh, vanishes for, for in cohomological degrees less than the depth, which, he, which in this case is equal to the dimension of R, because R being a complete intersection is of course Con Macaulay. Uh, and so if, if our R is, over, is an FP algebra, then we get that uh, the cohomology in degrees less than a dimension uh, and with coefficients in say z mod p or alpha p also vanishes because z mod p and alpha p admit uh, Art and Schreier exact sequences for instance uh, like so and by taking and by taking the associated cohomology along exact sequence from the vanishing supplied by depth we get the vanishing of, of flat cohomology with ZP coefficients in degrees less than, uh, less than dimension, likewise for, for alpha p. And so this uh, flat cohomology purity uh, phenomenon that uh, we'll be discussing is really somehow governed by depth in, in the end, at least in positive characteristic. And we'll see that, in fact, in mixed characteristic, it's also, it's also governed by, by depth. But, but before proceeding to, to mixed characteristic, let's just begin with the case uh, with, with the case when the cardinality of G is invertible in R, after all, it's not, I mean, it's, in even that case, it's different than, yeah? The depth, depth of what? Uh, of, uh, I mean, depth, depth, depth of R. Uh, like, so, uh, one, one always has, uh, so, uh, for an Euterian local ring, the cohomological characterization of depth, in, as in SJ2, is that uh, one looks at this, uh, local cohomology group and it it vanishes precisely in cohomological degrees less than the less than the depth of the of this Noetherian local ring and so because our ring is complete intersection depth equals dimension we get we get this and so we somehow in the end we see that our flat cohomology phenomenon is still coming from local cohomology it's not enough for UP it's not enough to know the depths for example for various toric singularities and so on. it's it's just for complete intersection yes yes I mean well, it's, then it is also not so difficult to prove for for complete intersection. Uh, yes. Okay. I mean, uh, in this theorem, it's really it's important that it's a complete intersection rather than just Cohen-Macaulay, which we don't see in this example. But I mean, uh, in fact, the theorem fails for Con for Con macaulay And okay, this uh, it's not all the phenomena that are witnessed in this example, but uh, at least uh, we see that it must be dimension rather than twice the dimension. Okay. So uh, now. In the case when the cardinality of this of this group is a unit in the in the ring, uh, it, it was known, and uh, this this is a result of Gaber, uh, who deduces it from uh, from his absolute cohomological purity. Uh, here we're dealing with complete intersections. Before we have we had regular rings. After passage to completion, our complete intersection becomes a quotient of a regular ring by a regular sequence, and uh, by some sort of local Lefschetz theorem, which says that uh, on cohomology, on local cohomology, this isomorphism in in the range up to the dimension roughly of the ring, uh, we get we get this vanishing from the absolute cohomological uh, uh, from the absolute cohomological purity result in the in the regular case. In fact, there are also other ways uh, to prove it, as also shown by Gaber. And uh, the low cohomological degree cases of this, of this, of this theorem uh, settle uh, conjectures of Gaber. More precisely, the cases in cohomological degrees 2 and 3 uh, give uh, the following more, more concrete uh, geometric consequences. Uh, if one has, for instance, in cohomological degree two, uh, we get that if one has a local complete intersection, Noetherian local ring R with maximal ideal M uh, of dimension of dimension three, precisely three, then the Picard group of the puncture spectrum of R has no no non-trivial torsion line bundles. Uh, so so. If the dimension is free, then the vanishing is in degrees uh, two and two and lower, and this local cohomology. I mean, th this sense, this H two which supports in the maximal ideal for for mu n, then somehow translates into into H one and lower for the puncture spectrum, and H one and lower for a puncture spectrum is then is then really torsion the Picard group, 
And so from, from this vanishing, we get, we, get this, we get this statement. And just, uh, just for comparison, let, let, let me recall that uh, in SJ2, Grothendieck uh, showed the grothendieck lefschetz theorem that under the same assumptions, except the dimension was supposed to be at least 4, uh, the Picard group of the entire puncture spectrum uh, was shown to be 0. So distortion requirement is not needed if dimension is at least 4. Uh, was was known uh, since si since the 60s, but there's a f there's a refinement uh, in dimension three that uh, allows to get rid of torsion. Well, it, that shows that there's no torsion. And uh, the the second the second point uh, conjectured by Gaber, in fact, in the, in the, in the similar in similar vein, is purity for the Brouw group of uh, in the case of complete intersection singularities. More precisely, if we have a Noetherian uh, scheme X and a closed subscheme z of x of codimension at least 2, oh sorry, of codimension at least 4, uh, such that, such that uh, the local ring of x uh, at, at, at z is a, is a local complete intersection for any, for any point z that lies on this closed subscheme z, uh, then, then uh, the cohomological Brouwer group of x namely the atal cohomology group with coefficients in, in GM, in the multiplicative group, and uh, torsion coefficients, is insensitive to removing this closed subscheme, this closed subscheme Z. The kernel and co-kernel of this kind of pullback map, uh, again one somehow can replace GM by mu, mu n, are governed by H2 and H3 of cohomology with supports along Z, then by working locally one immediately reduces to, to this kind of statement and uh, the vanishing of, of, of this cohomology for the degrees 2 and 3 with mu n coefficients then gives uh, by globalizing this, this global statement of insensitivity of the Brouwer group uh, upon removing a closed, uh, a closed subscheme of sufficiently large codimension as long as the singularities, as long as the singularities are, are, are right. Okay, and so uh, the, the, b because this, this case when the cardinality of G is a unit in R is, is, already, is already known, is settled, the, the main remaining case, the main, the main case of the theorem is when uh, the cardinality of G is, uh, is a power of P, where with P being equal to the residue characteristic, to the characteristic of the residue field of this uh, local complete intersection uh, ring R, and this, in this residue characteristic uh, is positive. And it's, a, and it's this main case that we'll discuss, we'll discuss in the rest. And what, what I'll do is I'll uh, briefly summarize the method of, of, of the proof overall of, of this main theorem, and then I'll discuss in more detail the aspects of that, uh, the, the, the parts of that method that, uh, that touch uh, mostly with, uh, that have most intersection with, uh, with uh, Barry's work over, over the years. So uh, since we're, we're discussing somehow the bad residue characteristic, it's, it's no, no surprise that, uh, that it's the perfectoid uh, methods that uh, allow this advance in the end. And in fact, there's a part of what we prove is a purity for flat cohomology phenomenon in, 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 in the setting of perfectoid rings. And we reduce the main theorem to, to, this, to, to this latter one. So let me give, let me give a statement. Uh, let me give a precise statement. And for that, let me just recall the definition of, of a perfected ring, uh, a commutative algebra type of uh, definition of a perfected ring. So uh, a, a commutative ring A is perfectoid if it is of the following form. If it is a quotient of the width vector ring of a perfect FP algebra for an implicitly fixed prime P by a principal ideal uh, generated by by, 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 an element, uh, by an element xi. So, uh, so okay, so uh, for, so okay, so for some, here B is some uh, perfect FP algebra. The Frobenius uh, endomorphism of it is, is, is an isomorphism. Uh, perfect FP algebra B. And some xi, uh, which in width vector coordinates, 
Well, okay, it has its width vector coordinates x0, x1, uh, so on. Uh, and uh, this, this element x1 is required to be a unit is required to be a unit in a perfect FP algebra uh, in a perfect FP algebra uh, B. That's a condition. That's just a definition of what what kind of rings will be will be considering. Let me tell right away that uh, this ring B in fact is determined by A, and in fact one can give a definition purely in terms of A rather than B. And uh, more precisely, this ring B is nothing else than the than the tilt of A. In other words, it's the uh, inverse limit perfection of the A modulo modulo P. If one takes a Frobenius uh, endomorphism of A mod P and takes the inverse limit, uh, then 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 that's that's just our B. Uh, and uh, B is not your is not in your definition. B is not complete necessarily complete relative to the zeros coordinate. So what happens is that after you complete B relative to the zeros coordinate of this vector, you must get this. But in general, you can have a, you can start from B which is not complete. And then, uh, then it is not exactly the, the field. Okay. Uh, okay. Thanks. So uh, the c zero at the completion of uh, of b is 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 just a tilt. Although I don't, I think in the definition one doesn't need to require that b b c zero adequately complete. Yeah, you can see easily <laughs> that when you complete, you get the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, and uh, and this ring, then and this ring. Sorry. W, I think you're about to tell us. Yeah, uh, w is just a, it's just a vit, it's just a vit ring, p typical vit ring of B, and in fact it's uh, well, it's also the, uh, can be this. I mean, it's just notation in the end, but somehow it's also the Fontaine's uh, period ring A inf of of this perfected ring A. Uh, just by definition, the width vector ring of, of the tilt of the of the of the perfect ring uh, A. Uh, okay, and uh, another ba basic fact that th is that this element xi is a non-zero divisor automatically. That in the end comes from uh, from the assumption that that the first width vector coordinate uh, be a unit. Uh, okay, let me just give. Uh, to, to, to basic examples to, ha to have something to have something concrete in mind. So firstly, uh, if A is an FP algebra, then uh, then being perfectoid is is the same as being perfect. Well, and in this case, uh, C is just uh, just P, which in width vector coordinates is zero one zero zero zero, and so. Uh, that in particular satisfies this assumption. Uh, with vectors of perfect ring modulo p is just that perfect ring again. And for the converse, I mean, for the converse direction, whatever perfect this of, of this form is slightly less, slightly less uh, trivial. But it somehow follows from the fact that any element in the kernel of the of, of, of this map, which which satisfies this condition, in fact, is a generator. Is a basic property one one proves. And the second, perhaps. Uh, more relevant uh, example to what we'll be discussing is that uh, where one has, for instance, ZP takes out all p power roots of p, and then one has some some free variables x1 up to xn takes out all p power roots of uh, these variables, and then we're considering complete intersections. So somehow we want to quotient by some equations f1 up to fm, and when takes out P power roots of these equations as well, uh, and uh, and one p adequately completes in the end, and one assumes uh, here to, to be able to make sense of these. I mean, uh, where 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 the fi are somehow just for for the sake of of its example, they are monomials in uh, in p and uh, x one up to up to x n, so that we can take so that we can take p power roots. For instance, if our, if our complete intersection was uh, just zp and uh, x1 up to xn modulo f1 up to fm, and the f1 up to fm happen to be monomials like so, then somehow the perfected ring that we'll reduce to in eventually is some ring of, of this type, of, of, this, of, this sort of, of this sort of form. <coughs> OK, and so the mean theorem then reduces 
to, to the following uh, perfecto statement, pu purity in a, in a perfectoid uh, setting, which says precisely that if we have a perfectoid ring A, and uh, we have a, an, uh, a closed a closed subscheme Z contained in the locus where P equals zero in the spec of A, such that there exists an A regular an A regular sequence. So we basically assume that the perfectoid A has enough depth along along the Z. We assume that there is an A regular sequence A1 up to A D in, in A uh, that vanishes on Z. So somehow informally, the depth, the depth of A along Z, is uh, at least is at least D. That's that's our assumption. Then, in in this in this situation, uh, the flat cohomology with supports in Z of of A uh, with uh, with coefficients in a, in any finite locally free commutative group scheme of p power order vanishes for in cohomological degrees less than less than this depth bound less than less than this d uh, so okay so here uh, g is commutative finite locally free a group of uh, p power order Okay, and in practice, this this closed this closed subset Z is just somehow. I mean, our initial complete intersection will be covered by a per, by a huge perfected cover, and the Z is just a preimage of the maximal ideal. We'll construct that cover in such a way that it has that along Z we have enough depth, which will follow from the complete intersection assumption and uh, the enough depth in A, and so from from this theorem in the end. Uh, one, one deduces that theorem, although, I mean, there's something in the reduction that I'm uh, definitely not explaining, that, but this is the key perfecto statement that, uh, that, that that one wants. And to get this perfecto statement, uh, we, use, uh, we use classification results uh, for, for, for such fine locally free group schemes over, over perfectoid rings. These, these have been showed, uh, these have been shown First, in, in, the, in the positive characteristic setting, namely in the setting of, uh, uh, of perfect FP algebras by Bertelot and Gaber, Bertelot did perfect evaluation in case, and uh, Gaber built on his method, then by, uh, by, by Eike Lau and uh, Peter Schultz in, in mixed characteristic case, and uh, there's also ongoing work of uh, Anschutz and Lebra, who give a prismatic interpretation of, of the construction. Anyway, the result says that uh, the, such G, 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 G over A, G finite locally free group schemes, commutative of P power order or perfected ring A, uh, they, they are classified by their Diodonet modules. In particular, one can associate them, one can associate to them Diodonet modules in the setting of uh, Prismatic homology, and this Diodonia module, denoted by M of G, is a module over over A inf uh, of A, is an A inf of A module of projective dimension at most one. And it's equipped with a Frobenius and semilinear Frobenius and Verschiebung uh, Verschiebung uh, endomorphisms, and uh, explicitly somehow it's given by the formula as uh, x one on the prismatic side of this of this perfectoid of uh, of of our group G against the prismatic uh, structure sheaf. Just, just like in crystalline Diodonia theory in positive characteristic, such, such fine locally free group schemes, one can associate to them their, their Diodonia module given by x1 in the, in the, in the crystalline uh, site against the, against the structure sheaf. 
and evaluate it at the terminal object of the, of the crystalline site. So the same thing is happening here in mixed characteristic. And uh, this gives an equivalence of categories between, between G over A, finite locally free commutative of PPR order, and such, uh, such linear, algebraic, linear algebraic data. And in terms of this classification, we take this classification and we show the following, the following, the following formula. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, in fact, I'm not, I'm not saying, but uh, there are the following, there are the following relations that that are requ that are required to hold. This part is part of the condition. Work C is a generator of the of the. Well, we were already seen there. It's a generator of of uh, of the map from A in for A back to A of that search action, and uh, it's. Okay, in prismatic terms, it's an orientation of the corresponding of the corresponding prism. Okay, and so in terms of this classification, we have the following formula for our flat cohomology that we're interested in, which supports in Z of the ring A and, and coefficients in a finite locally free group scheme of commutative uh, commutative with, of p-power order, is given by the cohomology. Again, with supports in Z of of the ring A inf of A. And coefficients in in the in the in the Diodonia module, and then one takes a Verschiebung invariance of this of this uh, of this of of this right hand side in homotopical sense. So one takes a mapping fiber of uh, of uh, Verschiebung minus minus identity. So this uh, this formula whose Whose proof I'll to some extent discuss in, in the rest. It allows us to deduce this 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 perfected purity, uh, and and let's let's see how. I mean, the point is that since we assume that the depth of A along Z is at least d, then the depth along Z of the A inf of A is at least is at least d plus one. I mean, the element psi was a non-zero divisor always, and so because a is a quotient of a in for a by this non-zero divisor psi, if along z a has depth at least d, one has this regular sequence, and one can add as a zeroth element of that regular sequence this element psi, and one gets depth of a in at least d plus one. And so now, once one has this depth at least d plus one, one wants vanishing of this cohomology in low cohomological degrees. Firstly, by using uh, by using exact cohomology sequences, one can get rid of Verschiebung invariance. I mean that that sits somehow in the right end, uh, at the right at, at the right edge of the exact triangle, and afterwards, once one gets rid of that, this m of g is of projective dimension at most one over a inf. So it's so it's a quotient of essential. I mean of projective modules over a inf, each of which is a direct sum in the free module, and so one 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 therefore by Devisage reduces to to free modules, but one once vanishing in degree one higher, and that's where one higher. What, that's where one higher comes comes from in the end. Uh, in this fact that psi is a non-zero divisor, and from this key formula, it's really it's the depth again that gives that that gives that gives the purity. So of course it is a, it is finitely presented module of projective dimension less than equal to one. Yes, uh, yeah, that's right. All right, and so. In, 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 in the rest of the talk, I'll discuss the steps that go into proving this key formula star. And in particular, these steps involve proving some new properties of flat cohomology. Some, some of these properties in some, in some it, it, special cases of, of some of these properties have already been considered in Maser for instance, by Maser, for instance, in his Iwasawa, uh, Iwasawa theory paper on, of, of elliptic curves. And one particularly nice feature, okay, well, uh, a nice feature about about the proof of this, uh, of these of these new properties is that they actually involve passage to flat cohomology of simplicial rings, and use homotopical techniques in the end. And of course, it was Maser uh, as well who pioneered the uh, homo homotopical methods in in, uh, in algebraic geometry and in arithmetic with his uh, with his work on uh, atal homotopy uh, joint with Michael Artin. So the steps for proving this key formula star is to first to first show it in a case when A is perfect in positive characteristic. Here one uses crystalline diodonet theory 
classification like that, which was established by Bertelot and Gaber, and uh, also written by Lau, and uh, this case is significantly simpler, but one, one, one shows it first, and then one uses this case to derive, to derive new properties of FPPF cohomology. FPPF cohomology with coefficients in finite locally free group schemes, commutative, and uh, the, the, this, this derivation in the end it's somehow by reduction to perfect rings, and one uses simplicial techniques to get more to get uh, more robust formalism to, 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 to do those reductions. We'll, we'll discuss to, to, to some extent, and uh, finally one uses this one uses these new properties uh, to settle to settle this key formula in general. Here, the techniques that go in are, again, this classification and uh, the formalism of the arc topology of, uh, of Bat uh, and Matthew. So let me perhaps write out more precisely. Some, some of the inputs are, are uh, p-complete arc topology. More precisely, p-complete arc descent. I'll discuss a bit later more precisely what this means uh, for, for the functor that takes a perfectoid uh, ring A and associates to it uh, the FPPF cohomology of A with coefficients and finite locally free commutative groups, schema P power order. And this P complete, I mean, the arc topology uh, is a recent. Uh, Recent work of of Bart and Matthew that uh, that that we use that we use. Okay, so uh, let me let me then proceed to 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 giving those these new properties of FPPF cohomology that that we show that we show along the way. Okay, so for, for this, we'll fix a ring A, we'll fix a ring R, sorry, and the commutative finite locally free uh, group scheme uh, G over, over, this, over this ring R. This will be our coefficients of the, of the, of the flat cohomology we consider. And the first, the first, the first theorem that's that's used that's used in the proof is excision for flat cohomology. The statement, more precisely, is that if we have a finitely generated if we have a finitely generated ideal i inside this ring R, and we have a map uh, from S uh, to S prime of R algebras, and in fact they can be allowed to be simplicial R algebras. Even this, I mean. For, for a moment, one can ignore this, but in the proof, it in fact is very important. Uh, of simplicity, our, our algebras such that such that this map is an isomorphism along the along the ideal i, such that the derive the reductions modulo powers of this ideal agree for S and S prime. For every positive integer n, then uh, the, okay, so when in, in this setting, uh, the FPPF cohomology of S, uh, which supports in this ideal and coefficients in this group, is the same as that of, as that of uh, S prime. Let me just give a concrete example in which uh, this type of situation occurs, in which it, it, it's uh, per particularly useful. So, for instance, in the, in the main theorem, in the setting of the main theorem where we have an Euterian local ring and its maximal ideal, then when we consider a flat cohomology which supports the maximal ideal of the ring R with coefficients in this group scheme, it doesn't change if we replace, if we replace the ring by, uh, by its completion. 
by its maxati completion. And in fact, it's this statement. In special cases, that was also used in Iwasawa theory, where flat cohomology, uh, flat cohomology occurs. For instance, the ring R could be a localization of a, of a number field that's some prime ideal. And uh, uh, with uh, okay, so uh, all right. Uh, the the second the second property of of, of FPPF cohomology that uh, I'd, I'd like to mention is uh, FPQC descent. More precisely, FPPF cohomology with such coefficients agrees with FPQC cohomology, with uh, and this gives like more more robust uh, descent properties, more more. Uh, larger Lyrae sp spectral sequences. More precisely, the statement is that the functor, which associates to, to, an, to an R algebra S, simplicial R algebra actually, uh, the FPPF cohomology of S with coefficients in G uh, satisfies descent for the FPQC topology. And concretely, this, this statement means uh, concretely, this means that the FPPF uh, cohomology of this of this of this ring S with coefficients in G is the same as the FPQC cohomology. Of course, FPQC topology is uh, is large. Uh, for instance, that of a field, it involves any other field, so one needs some cutoff cardinal, but uh, that's just the technicality. So for every large, for every large uh, cutoff cardinal kappa, for every sufficiently large cutoff cardinal kappa, we have that the FPF cohomology can be computed in F FPQC topology, and in particular, if one has a large cover of, the, of this S, flat cover, then, then we, one can compute the FPPF cohomology of S in terms of the check nerve of, of that cover, which is how this result is, is useful in, the, uh, in, the, in, in practice. Okay, and uh, the third property is, uh, is descent for yet another topology, but after restricting, after restricting S, uh, is descent for F PF cohomology in the P complete arc topology. More, more precisely, here uh, one assumes that this group is a G, that this group G is of P power order for implicitly fixed uh, prime P. Uh, and then one considers a functor, uh, the functor which associates to a perfectoid ring, to a perfectoid uh, R algebra S. The FPPF cohomology of S with coefficients in G, uh, th this, this functor uh, is, uh, okay, so this, set, this functor satisfies, satisfies descent for, for uh, P, complete arc, P complete arc topology. And more precisely what, I'll explain in a moment what that means. What, what that means more precisely is that if one has a map from a perfectoid S to a perfectoid S prime, such that, such that for every for every map uh, from S to a valuation ring, p periodically complete valuation ring of rank one, for for, for every such map, there exists a diagram. There exists another periodically complete valuation ring V prime, and the completion of, of a diagram like so, such that such the diagram commute, and this map is uh, finite, uh, is uh, faithfully flat. In other words, uh, okay, and this V prime is also a periodically complete valuation ring of, of rank one. In other words, one, the P complete arc topology is just the topology uh, here in, on perfectoids, where, which, for which, any, any point of S valued in a periodically complete valuation ring of, of rank one lifts to such a point of S prime, except possibly after enlarging the valuation ring. So it's a, in particular, it's kind of topology insensitive to, I mean, of course, one, just for defining it, one does not need to, to restrict the perfectoids, and so it's insensitive to reduce structures. It's, it's somehow, any faithfully flat cover, for instance, is, is, such, is, such, is such cover. 
And so uh, the statement is then that uh, the concrete interpretation of this descent statement is that the FPPF cohomology of this of this S with coefficients in G can be computed in terms of the of the cover as the as a, as a derived uh, inverse limit of the FPPF cohomologies of the check nerve be complete periodically completed a check nerve of the of the cover and the point uh, the, the point why this is useful is that uh, in practice because the topology is uh, is somehow so, so so weak then in practice one can choose uh, s prime to be a product of valuation rings product of periodically complete valuation rings with even algebraically closed fraction field uh, the the nature of the topology allows such covers and so then once we have this once we have this descent result to prove the key formula we can both sides of the key formula s satisfy therefore descent for this for this very weak topology and so effectively we can replace this ring this ring a this perfected a by a product of valuation rings by s forming suitable hypercover uh, in the p complete arc topology and and in that case, we can somehow almost check it by hand. This this formula. That's that's roughly how the how the argument for the key formula goes based on these based on these new properties of of, of flat cohomology. So, to which extent is it uh, essential to use the arc topology rather than the previous, I think, called V topology or the slightly the one where we will use not rank one but any? Uh, so, is it uh, is it for the reductions that you do? Is it enough to use the V that is? You can do things for. Uh, I don't know. I think, like in the end, one wants these valuation rings V to also be perfectoid, and if one has a valuation ring of some really large rank, then I mean, perfectoid need to in particular be. Uh, well, you get only perfectoid ones from. Uh, okay. I mean, in short. Uh, I, I don't know right away, but I suspect I suspect it's important, and in any way, it's certainly very convenient for this p, p complete arc topology. Whether one can get away with a v uh, with a v descent, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, all right, and so uh, the, the the proofs of these. Okay, so in the end, like, we see that uh, it suffices to prove maybe just this statement with that excision, and, and so it's these F properties of FPPF cohomology that in the end give the key formula. And so how do we prove this uh, based, on the, based on the case of the key formula in positive characteristic that we assume, uh, that we assume there? That's the step, step, step one. So the proofs reduce, reduce to the case when S and S prime are perfect FP algebras. Okay, I mean, uh, initially these, these, these S and S prime need not be even FP algebras. So certainly it has, I mean, the reduction is somewhat indirect and more precisely what is, what is happening in here in the reduction is uh, arc this, well, uh, if one just looks at the, at the functor which computes cohomology after inverting P, then this functor and here the cohomology can be taken to be a tau cohomology because after inverting p, the group, which is of p power order, by decomposing it into primary parts, uh, this, this functor uh, satisfies descent for the arc topology, which is a slightly, uh, slightly stronger topology than the p complete uh, arc topology. This is a result of Bat and Matthew, which, uh, I mean, uh, some of the consequences of, the, of, of, this, of this arc descent were already. Uh, shown by by Gaber and uh, Fujiwara, uh, one also uses deformation theory in a, in a crucial way. More precisely, the statement from deformation theory that that one uses is that uh, if one has a square zero thickening, square zero thickening S of a of a ring S, S bar both simplicial actually secretly uh, with ideal with ideal i square zero ideal i then the 
flat cohomology, the FPPF cohomology of S with coefficients in G is computed in terms of the FPPF cohomology uh, of S bar with coefficients in G. In terms, I mean, the, 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 the cofiber of, of this map is the R home, uh, R algebra R home from the from the pullback along the identity section of the cotangent complex of this of this fight fight group scheme G over over A, our home into into a shift of the of the of the kernel by uh, by one like so. And in fact, it's it's for this deformation theory where the complete intersection assumption in the main theorem becomes really important because to, to control this our home, one wants this ideal I to be perhaps free over S bar in, in, in practice to be able to control this, this cohomology. This is a perfect complex supported in, the, in degrees zero and minus one. And if, but if the ideal I is some arbitrary ideal as would be for a quantum Macaulay ring, then one couldn't, one couldn't control this deformation theory sufficiently, su 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 sufficiently finely. Uh, okay, and the third, the third input, sorry? Over R, uh, this I mean R is my base fixed base. Uh, uh, sorry, this should also be R. I mean it could also write over S. It's uh, it's not. Uh, th this is an this is somehow an object in the drive category of R modules because my my group scheme is defined over over my base ring R, and. Uh, and I, in fact, I write it in this way so that I don't have to discuss. I mean, S will be like simplicial ring in the end, and so I don't really want to get into what is our home over simplicial ring. It's just. Uh, okay, so these these two ingredients. Uh, Give some of the reductions that go into the proof of these of these new properties of flat cohomology, but really they they by themselves don't allow us to pass the positive characteristic as we want to reduce the perfect the perfect FP algebras. And the third input is a certain piadic continuity formula that I'm about to state, which which is uh, another property of FPPF cohomology that uh, that 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 we show. So the third in these in these inputs to the proofs is the following piadic continuity formula. Here we assume that uh, G is of p power order. I'll just write it informally like so: that G is killed by uh, by a power by a power of p, and uh, then. Uh, for a simplicial for a simplicial R, R algebra S for which for which the zero homotopy group is a Hanselian along P. So if R is just a, is just the usual uh, is just the usual algebra with no higher homotopy, then then this assumption just means that this S is, is Hanselian along the ideal P, for instance. So for instance, S could be a discrete and periodically complete ring. P complete uh, R algebra. Okay, so under, under these assumptions, the flat cohomology of, of S with coefficients in our group G of P power order is computed in terms of the reductions of S modulo powers of P as the inverse derived inverse limit of derived reductions of S modulo powers of, of P with still with coefficients in G. And it's this formula that in the end allows us to pass from something of mixed characteristic really of was after inverting P's of characteristic zero to something that is really a thickening of an F FP algebra in the end. And it's through, through, through this that we eventually go to, go to perfect FP algebras in our, uh, in our reductions. And in the, in the remainder of the talk, I would like to give a brief sketch of what goes into proving, proving this theorem, which somehow will also be illustra illustrative of what goes into proving these properties of, of, of FPPF cohomology.
Okay, so to just, uh, okay, so first, uh, I mean, certainly for simplicity, one could assume that S is discrete, let's say, but nonetheless, one needs, one needs, even in that case, these derived reductions, they're not really discrete rings unless S, say, is P torsion free. So it really is convenient to have this extra generality of S being a simplicial ring. But to be able to talk about that, let me just briefly define what, what FEPF cohomology of a simplicial uh, ring with coefficients in G actually, actually is. So first one defines FEPF side, a map F of simplicial rings. So these are just simplicial objects in the category of rings, say. I mean, one can think of them like that for just for simplicity, say. It is flat, is flat if the following two conditions are met. If the map on zero homotopy groups is flat, and on higher homotopy, which are modules over the homotopy, uh, over a homotopy in, uh, in degree zero, the natural base change map is an isomorphism. So the n homotopy map, uh, n homotopy group of S prime is just a base change of the n homotopy group of S along the, along the map of pi zero. In other words, that in higher homotopy, nothing is really happening. The whole thing is kind of governed by, by, by what is happening in pi, in pi zero, which where, where the map is required to be flat. And a flat map, F is uh, faithfully flat, or respectively of finite presentation, if if the map on pi zero is so. Okay, so then we, we get the notion of a FPPF FPPF cover in particular, a faithfully flat a faithfully flat map, and we we get a site. We get an FPPF site. On simplicial rings, right? Uh, that's right. I mean, uh, I don't. I mean, I, I think it's not really a, a problem. Like, uh, yes, uh, yes. And somehow, really, it's an infinity category that's that's behind this. And but everything in the end depends on the homotopy category. One one takes this derived ten one takes this uh, derived tensor product, but the property of, being, of, the, of, the, of the base change being flat, flat or not, it really only depends on homotopy groups. So it's, uh, it's not, I mean, I think it's not so abusive to say that it's uh, actually a site. But one uses, for instance, Quillen spectral sequence for the derived tensor product of simplicial rings to show that this, this notion is, is stable under, under base change, uh, which perhaps is not immediately obvious. Okay, uh, but it's certainly stable under, under composition. That, that's clear from the outset. And so one defines the FPPF cohomology of, of S with coefficients in G by shififying, by uh, okay, by shififying sufficiently many times, transfinitely many times, just just like in uh, Lurie's book on higher topos theory, uh, the functor which sends a simply shell, simply shell ring S, simply shell R, R, R algebra S. To, to the mapping space of, to the S point uh, space of, of G, which is, which can be thought of just as a simplicial abelian group. And so one plays as a simplicial abelian group in negative, in non-positive cohomological degrees, and then one shififies that functor in the infinity categorical kind of sense. And so one gets in, uh, the cohomology possibly also in, uh, in positive uh, degrees. Okay, let me just uh, give a brief summary of the very basic properties of this, of this process, and then we'll proceed to, to, this, to this argument for piadic continuity. So firstly, in, in negative degrees, nothing happens. 
just like if one forms a PPF cohomology of the usual of the usual ring and coefficients with coefficients in uh, in, a, in a group or in a shift and in the in degree zero it's just global sections and more generally in the setting that truncation in cohomological degrees less or equal to zero of this R gamma uh, SG is just nothing else but the S point space of, 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 of G itself so in, in negative degrees not, nothing happens and in positive degrees this one can show I mean it is not it is not immediate from definitions and the fact that it's specific to G being a finite locally free group scheme uh, okay so in positive degrees this is actually nothing else than just the PPF cohomology of the of the pi zero with coefficients with coefficients in G. So this FPF cohomology of simplicial ring somehow splices this this simplicial abelian group with uh, with cohomology that happens in, in positive degrees, but splices in a ways that's amenable to uh, to formalism. To it's amenable to manipulations. In particular, taking those R limbs, and so for instance, one one property that that one has is um, that Postnikov towers behave well with respect to this uh, to this process. If one has our S and map to simplicial R algebra S, Sn, Sn minus 1, is such a tower, for instance, given by Postnikov truncations of, of the original S, the assumption is that, uh, uh, that the truncations in uh, homotopical, I mean, in homological degrees less or equal than n are insensitive when passing to Sn. Then, then the FPPF cohomology of S with coefficients in G is just the inverse limit of the FPPF cohomologies of Sn with coefficients with coefficients in G with, with, with respect to this tower. And it's this property that allows us to get rid of the homotopy somehow in some of, in some of the arguments when, when, it's, when it's desirable to, to do so. And so, okay, so let me get back to this periodic continuity. Now we assume that S is P Henselian. And we want, and she is of p power order, and we want that the r gamma s g is the same as our limb of r gamma modulo, well, write properly, the right tensor product. So in the first formula for h0 and lower, I suppose we have lower because ring is simplician. That's right. You wrote g of s. But, yes. but this should depend on S. I suppose if you have a quasi-isomorphism simplicial ring, this should uh, not change your R gamma. Yes. That, but G right. of S, when G is not smooth, it's not so natural to evaluate G uh, naively. I, I mean, there's, there's a map. Uh, there's a map from this to that. Yes. And it's a quasi-isomorphism. It's just an isomorphism on, on homotopy. In like pi n h h negative i of, of of this is the same as h negative i of that, which is then really simplicial resolution of something that uh, uh, so if you have a coefficients like a mu p or alpha p that has an important, so uh -huh. you can have a section of this on some scheme which has an important, but you can resolve the ring of this by smooth things. Yes, and so then you 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 have the simplicial ring coming with, with smooth things. And you want to, and then you take uh, G of this, but uh, when the group is uh, is uh, like alpha p or mu, I mean, then it's, there are no non-trivial sections on. So the the, the 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 morphisms when I'm writing G of S, it's really a bit disingenuous because I'm, it's really morphisms in the infinity category of simplicial rings. Okay. Yes, it's not a naive morphism. So that's a somehow the trick that that's a thing that I'm hiding really. That uh, that the objects are the naive ones, but the morphisms are are subtle. So you always have to use this. Yes. Uh, okay, and uh, okay, I'm out of time. Let me just give a basic. Uh, basic step is uh, is to build. Starting well, first uh, first one reduces uh, to to s being just its pi zero by using this Postnikov tower argument. Both sides behave well with respect to Postnikov towers because of this fact. And then the main somehow step is to replace is to build is to build an indef PPF hypercover. Uh, 
of, of s by some by some si such that each each si is uh, p Henselian just as s was and in addition in addition it has uh, no non split no non split FPPF covers just like one builds uh, local rings in the FPPF topology by taking limits overall, I mean, then one can also, for any scheme, for any, for any ring S, one can build an if in the FPPF cover, which has no non-split FPPF covers itself. And if one alternates that with p-hensalization, one can make this such that the ring is p henselian and then one continues on the, to do the hypercover of this sort. This computes the R gamma of, of, of this in terms of the R gammas of the SI. And for the SI somehow, one computes more or less by hand. I mean, f f for instance, then for SI, one has that the R gamma SI of, of G, because it has no non split covers, it's just G of S. Then one wants to kind of show the same for S modulo P, P, P to the N, and then there's only uh, one uses the Begere sequence, one uses uh, passage to, to derive PID completion, uh, somehow derive Boer Velaslo. But anyway, this uh, um, amount of time, so I won't enter into, into details there. So I want to go back to a question of uh, uh, filters. The G of S there, I would have thought of as just a simplicial group. But yes. It's apparently not. I mean, it's in some infinity category, is that right? Yes, it is a simplicial abelian group, but it's to be understood as a simplicial abelian group in somehow the infinity category of simplicial abelian groups. So it's not really like saying that it's a concretely like a physical simplicial abelian group that is not well defined, but it's up to somehow. Oh. Oh. But uh, I think a simpler approach by hand, so to speak, is perhaps to resolve your Firefly group scheme as usual uh -huh. uh, to can, as a two-term complex smooth things. And I suppose that for the smooth things, some of the manipulations, at least if you work at all locally, there is no problem with lifting, so it should be possible to work more naively, like to define G of S as, at least in the, okay. in, in using a tal topology as more naively. Uh, in fact, I don't know, maybe the world theory needs you, but I believe that you can, one can, in many cases, one can simplify, at least for the coefficient for the... Yes, in fact, we use this kind of resolution heavily in the proofs. So, for instance, the proof of this PID continuity formula, perhaps one can still use it use, using just Beguerie resolution from the outset and without entering this formalism. What do you say, the proof of? Of this PID continuity formula, per, I mean, it's relatively soft in terms of simplicial techniques that enter, and perhaps one can really carry it out from the outset, just taking, just working in terms of its resolution. But for, for the later ones, especially for the excision, it is really convenient to have the simplicial rings, and especially to have this, to have this formula for, for, for deformations and with respect to ADL. So it's, uh, I mean, it is true that our coefficients in the end are, are sufficiently simple, just a five-style group scheme which, or, the, or a complex of smooth groups. So. I believe that, uh, but also in your continuity thing, uh, of course, you are using uh, this fancy uh, kind of cohomology of, of uh, Lurie, where you even have to iterate uh, yes. infinitely many times because of this negative cohomological yes. degree. So I'm not so sure about my question, but my question was, so you write R lim, but I suppose that in good cases, so the good cases, for example, you have an Enzillian, that's a usual Enzillian ring, where let, let's say where the P torsion is even bounded, uh -huh. then the situation is like a peak approximation, and it is much better. You have yes. not only the R limb, but it is uh, more or less essentially, not exactly essentially, but I think that every cohomology, it will be, the projective system will be essentially constant. So you have... Uh, yes, in fact, it's this, I mean, uh, we use this type of Elkic thing in the end to, in the end of this proof. Yes. Uh, when uh, we have this R lim and we want that on pi zero, for instance, so here we have just G of SI, which is concentrated in negative, non-positive non degrees. And on, on, 
modulo p to the n, we then also show that it's concentrated in non-positive degrees, we take the r limb. But we still need to show that a pi zero it satisfies Metagleffler condition so that we don't jump off into, into, into H1. And to do that, we use the Elkic, we el use the Elkic type of argument because the, the cotangent complex of G is killed by a power of P because it's a, and, and so somehow it's the same type of, uh, the Elkic I think is, is there in this, in this, in this step. But the R limb in general is not essentially constant in every degree. Yeah, at least we don't, at least we don't know that. Okay, I, I even so, I suppose if you start from a usual range, it's, well, okay. I, I, yeah, I think it's reasonable to expect that it is.